<clears throat> What's up, guys? Hong Nguyen, OG Fitness. Welcome to the channel. Um, yeah, so today we're going to talk about why self-defense is, uh, is, uh, is basically a get-rich-quick scheme, right? Now, I'm making this video because somebody commented, one of the guys in the community commented on a video I made in the past called The Best Two Martial Arts for Self-Defense. Now, I don't actually remember what I said in those videos, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's judo and boxing. Okay, so the comment was really interesting. So I want to break this down with you guys because there was a lot of things he brought up um, concerning self-defense. So I'm just going to read you guys the uh, the comment. Okay, and then from there, we'll uh, we'll break it down and we'll take a look at it. And I'll explain to you guys why you should never pay for self-defense classes. You'll see. You'll see. It'll all make sense. All right. Um, so this is our uh, our boy here. Whatever system you learn, it should include the following de-escalating a potential attack, ambush attacks, multiple attackers, defending against weapons, if it's legal in your country, learning to use weapons, uh, both the pre and post fight scena uh, scenario, scenario training. Uh, what are the laws and reasonable force in your country? Oh, by the way, guys, I'm a little bit sick. Not sick, but I got these allergies, man. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm in Europe now. Okay, so I kind of, I'm going to be traveling this year. So right now I'm in Austria, uh, the land of Arnold, <laughs> in uh, Vienna. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome here. Okay, so back to reading the, the comment. Um, scenario training. Uh, what are the laws and reasonable force in your country? How to avoid a fight uh, and being aware of your surroundings. Uh, pressure testing. Oh, pressure testing. It sounds so... So jolly. <laughs> okay, training in different environments, um, sparring, both standing and on the ground. Okay, so I'm going to address each of those points. Okay, because there's a there's there's a lot to unpack there. Each point I'm going to either agree with or disagree with, and I'll explain to you guys why. Why, in my opinion. So, I've learned these principles from training with Prav Maga Global, uh, the head of KMG UK, John Bullock introduced us to Rory Miller. Oh, I don't know these guys, by the way. Like I'm not, a, uh, I've, I've never heard of them before, but I, I guess in the, in the in the space, they're, they're probably well known. Um, which some of his methods is part of our training. He has even been teaching seminars every year. Okay. And then, God darn it. Wait, I've actually taking pictures of the rest of this thing here. Give me a second, guys. Sorry about that. I was pretty sure I had this down. Okay. Okay. So I've come a long way from where I was. I started off with jujitsu, Japanese jujitsu, just in case you get confused. Uh, yeah, that's important to point it out, guys, because a lot of times now when people say jiu-jitsu, they're talking about Brazilian jiu-jitsu and not uh, Japanese jiu-jitsu. So Japanese jiu-jitsu is the traditional jiu-jitsu. If you hear traditional jiu-jitsu, you know it's Japanese. Okay. And uh, kickboxing, uh, gogu, gogu, goju, karate, uh, judo, uh, taiho, tai, taiho jitsu, uh, and now Krav Maga. Now, Krav Maga seems to be the system that gives me a proper understanding with self-defense. I remember once I asked my kickboxing instructor how to get out of a headlock. <laughs> she didn't know what to say. As we all know, kickboxing only teaches sparring. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to address that right away. Now, I think that's not fair. I think that um, kickboxing is a sport, you know, so you're learning how to punch and kick and there's rules. <clears throat> and um, I mean, Yes, sparring is a big part of it, but you're learning how to punch and kick, and you're learning a sport, right? Now, of course, she might not know how to show you how to get out of a headlock because it's not – you can't headlock in kickboxing, okay? Uh, with that said, if you want to um, – like if you did – but if you did um, any form of grappling – you know, like you, you should know how to get out of a headlock. Like I do wrestling, so I would just – and judo, so there's like a and and I've done BJJ as well. So oh, for those those of you guys who don't know, like I'm I'm a black belt in judo and 
I've been doing that for about eight years, uh, six years with BJJ, I'm a blue belt in BJJ. And uh, yeah, I did, I've done some MMA, some boxing, some kickboxing, some Taekwondo. I'm, I'm pretty much all over the place. Um, mainly, uh, my forte is grappling for now, but I mean, I'm a martial artist, so I, I essentially do everything, everything, because it's all good, it's all fun, it's all just fighting for me. <laughs> okay, so of course, yeah, like, you know, that's kind of like asking, um, you know, like a, 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 a wrestler, ask him how to do a spinning back kick, jumping, spinning, flying 360 back. Kick. Oh, he's going to look at you and be like, I, I don't know, you know? So I think that's, yeah, that, 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 that to me is a little bit uh, funny. Okay. Now let me get to you guys. Let's break this all down. But what what I'm going to do first is I'm going to play a video in the background. Now, this has nothing, nothing to do with what we're talking about. But at least it's a little bit more entertaining than, you know, just looking at my face and looking at the wall in the back. Now, this is, check this out, guys. Why 80s HK action movies uh, kicked ass. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to let that play right there while I, I go through these points. Now, yeah, I love Hong Kong um, uh, action movies. They were amazing, man. And uh, yeah, it was back in the 80s, 90s. I'm 44, guys. So, you know, um, I grew up with these movies. So they're they're really, really awesome. All right, let me play this shit for you guys first. And then we get back to the video. Hey, where the... All right, let me just find this thing here a second. What the hell? I can't seem to find my damn video. Won't be too long, guys. Sorry about that. Why is it not? Why can't I find the video? Oh, there it is. All right. Let's kill the volume on this. Um, all right. <clears throat> Okay, so as I was saying, <clears throat> self-defense, man, it's it's like get-rich-quick scheme, right? Now, self-defense to me is the icing on the cake. <clears throat> but first, you got to bake the damn cake. So baking the cake means that you actually have to learn how to fight. The best way to learn how to fight is to do combat sports, in my opinion. Okay, because the traditional martial arts, they're, they're more, like I mentioned this in another video, but they're more, in my opinion, more advanced concepts. Um... Okay, and, and also the thing is that they have a different way of doing things. So they'll they'll train, they'll condition your body, they'll teach you movements, they'll teach you the forms, they'll teach you that, and then for years, and then only then will they actually teach you, they'll get into actual fighting. So that's why a lot of these guys, even though you spent like um, some schools, you know, they spent the first 10 years uh, or five years, you know, just basically not fighting and doing everything else. So they're doing all the... They're doing some fundamental conditioning stuff and some movement stuff, movement patterns, you know, forms and teaching you how to move your body, teaching you the technique and all that, but you're not actually learning how to fight yet. So um, traditional martial arts and and, and even self-defense, okay, to me is icing on the cake. Self-defense is, is, is probably even worse <laughs> in my opinion because <laughs> you don't even have the good stuff from, 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 uh, from TMA. Okay, so you have to... You have to learn how to bake the cake first, man. And, and that's just the way it is. Now, yeah, and, and to me, when they sell you uh, self-defense, to me, it sounds like, oh, we're going to teach you, uh, you know, how to defend yourself, uh, you know, in, I don't know, three months or six months or whatever, you know? It sounds like like quick fix. That's what it sounds to me. And I don't believe in quick fixes, uh, whether it's to get rich, okay, or make money or, or to actually, you know, develop skills that you could use, right, in real life. So... Da, 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 da. What else did I want to say in regards to this? <laughs> okay. Yes, it takes a lot of time to learn how to fight, guys. <clears throat> you know, that's why I always, I think that you should be training, um, well, the day you learn how to walk, right? Ideally. Now, if that's, uh, if you didn't have um, the opportunity to do that, then I think that you should start now. Okay. And always be training in something, you know, now if you switch up, you switch up fine, but always be training. So training, whether it be in boxing and grappling and wrestling, if you're hurt, you can, you know, do some stuff that's, uh, that doesn't involve, um, 
too much, uh, you know, sparring, you know, so then you can do stuff like maybe, I don't know, Aikido, for example, um, you know, something light, you know, some, um, maybe even Wing Chun would be, uh, not a bad idea. You know, you could work, you could, you could train in all sorts of ways right? in martial arts, right. But always be training and always, um, be fit to, so that you can actually, uh, train and, you know, fight. Okay. So that's the thing. Uh, yeah. And of course, I think that you should do combat sports first, and then after that, add um, all the all the other stuff, all the self defense stuff, or the, uh, the the TMA stuff. Or or for those of you guys who are really into TMA, then what I suggest is that maybe you put more of an emphasis. Let's let's use the 20, uh, 80, 20 rule. So eighty percent of the time, you do the, the the real stuff, right? Not the real stuff, but the combat sports stuff, the stuff that's going to teach you really how to fight. Okay, and then you can the other twenty percent of the time you can do the more fancy stuff, you know, and the stuff that's more, um, um, well, you know, traditional. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So now let's break down each single point. I'm going to try and go through them fast because I always try to make these videos not too long. Oh, there's an ad playing. I, I'm not going to skip around. Who cares? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, da, 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 da. Check this out. So once you actually know how to fight, okay, you get to a level where you, you know, you know how to strike, you know how to grapple, you know how to take down, all right? I put those, I put fighting, you know, in those three categories, right? And that sounds, if that sounds like MMA, it's because, yep, well, MMA is the closest sport that we have that resembles, um, you know, actual fighting. And I understand self-defense is a little bit different. So then watch how easy it is, how easy it is to add self-defense to your game. I'm gonna go through each point that this, um, this 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 person mentioned, and you're gonna see, like, it's just my opinion. Of course, you guys that have different opinion in the comment in the comment section, right? De-escalating. Okay, guys, you don't need to take a course on how to de-escalate. Okay, it's very simple. This is how you do it. Wait, let me let me skip this thing for you guys. Not not the so you go back to so you guys don't think I'm trying to run ads here. <laughs> Back to the action stuff. Okay. All you have to do is say that you don't want to fight. Sorry, bro. Hey, you know, don't want any trouble. Um, you know, sorry about that. Uh, here, how about I go buy you a beer or buy you a beer, whatever, if you're in a bar, you know? And that's it. And of course, always keep yourself bladed, you know, in a bladed stance. And, uh, you know, keep your arms out. Hey, you know, blah, 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 move them around a little bit, circle. There you go. You know, just apologize. And. You know, that's it. So that to me is de-escalating. I mean, how else are you going to de-escalate, right? Or um, I don't know, Jocko, Jocko Willings actually said this in the video. He's like, oh, yeah, hey, no problem, man. It's, got, it's all good. You know, I'm just trying to get home, you know, go to work, whatever. You know, basically, you just want to um, use words to say that, hey, it's, you know, no, no big deal. You don't want to fight, okay? And, of course, if that doesn't work, then, hey, you... You have to defend yourself. You have to defend yourself, right? But the escalation. So you see, I just explained to you guys how to do that. You know, just swallow your pride and say sorry, basically. You know, and of course, there's different ways you could word that, but that's essentially it. I don't think you need courses on that, man. You know, just think of um, just you as a human being, right? Like if somebody, if you were like really pissed off and you want to fight somebody and the guy started like being cool, apologizing, hey, sorry, man, I didn't. You know, didn't mean that. Listen, I just want to get home. You know, I had a bad day. I'm, I'm, I'm wrong, whatever. You know, and and yeah, just, just. And if you're in a bar, you can. Hey, let me just buy you a drink. I want to apologize. You know, let's um, let's. You know, can we just let it go? You know, and whatever. Right. That's it. Okay. Now, ambush attack. <laughs> okay, this is insane. Like. Like, do you have, what, what are you, in the mafia? Like, why are you worried about ambush attacks, you know? Like, who's going to ambush you? What, are you in a war zone? Like, okay, if you're, if you're in the military, like, you're going to, you know, if you get ambushed, you, you're probably going to, you're probably done for, you know, to be honest. And in real life, if, why are people ambushing you, you know? Like, so it comes down to this. Be aware of where you are and your surroundings, right? Like, if you're, if you're in a place that's, uh, uh, like if you're in a ghetto, like a serious ghetto, and then you see, you know, it's sketch, it's dark, it's late, you know, it's the weekend, 
you know, there's, there's people out looking for trouble. I mean, yeah. Okay. Then you have to be hyper aware of your uh, surroundings. Okay. And Hey, you just gotta, you just gotta like stay away from people in dark places, man. You know? So that's, that's my best advice on that. And the truth is if you get ambushed, you're, 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 you're effed, you know? So that's that. So yeah. Okay. Next one. Multiple attackers. Uh, same thing, same thing. Like you got to, first of all, be, yeah, you always have to be aware of where you are. Like, I want to emphasize that again. Like if you're in, you know, like if, if you're going into an area where you know it's dangerous and, and there's a lot of troublemakers, it's a weekend, people are drunk, you know, they're just roaming the streets looking for trouble. I've heard that in, uh, in, in, in certain parts of uh, Paris, it's, uh, you know, it's Paris, the city of love. Uh, from what I've heard, you know, I've never been, but from my, what I've heard, not the case, man. Like on the outskirts at certain times, you got to watch out, man, you know? So <clears throat> I'll tell you guys a story about that next time. But what I'm saying is multiple attackers. Dude, man, you got to cross the street. You know, you got to cross the street or walk the other way or run away. Don't wait to get close, you know? So it comes up to the sa same thing. Like you have to be aware of your surroundings, where be aware of your environment, okay? And then take the necessary precaution. You don't need a course for this, okay? You don't need to, to, to spend hours and hours of your life training this, you know? And plus on top of that, if you don't know how to fight, well, hey, you know, what are you gonna do? Kick a guy in the ball, like one guy, you're gonna, there's like five guys, you're gonna kick one in the balls. What, what do you think? I mean, ah, whatever. Okay, defending against weapons. This, this is, this is actually valid. I think that, um, um, the best way to, and, and this is something that I have to get into eventually, um, because it could change the whole thing, right? Like if you have like, let's say, um, for example, um, a knife on you. Okay. If you're allowed to have a knife, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. If you're not allowed, you shouldn't have a knife, but if you have a knife on you and then there's two guys or three guys, but they don't have any weapons and you pull the knife out. Yeah, it, it kind of evens the playing field uh, quite a bit, you know, because whoever's coming in is getting chopped up. So, right. And I think that the best way to learn how to defend against a knife is actually how to learn how to use a knife, right? So I think that as a martial artist, I'm totally for learning uh, weapons, you know, knife fighting, stick fighting, uh, you know, using uh, using guns and all that, right? It uh, doesn't mean that you should be walking around with them if you're not allowed to, Okay. And I think that's the best way to learn how to, um, um, well, you know, learn how to defense against, uh, defend against weapons. So that I agree with. Uh, da, 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 da. Now, um, if it's legal in your country to use weapons, well, here's the thing. Most countries, it's not legal. Um, so I think, like I said, just, um, you know, learn how to use them, right? And, of course, if you're allowed to carry them, then go ahead, If you know. Um, but of course I, I should caution you guys that I feel as though the, like, if you carry a weapon on you, you're more likely to, uh, to use it in a, in a, in a situation you might, you know, you might just pull it out when you really didn't, you really didn't have to kind of thing just because you have it. So you have to be careful about that. You have to learn how to, um, how do you say it? Use your judgment. Okay. And here's a, here's another idea. If you turn your body into a lethal weapon. You don't need to carry any weapons. So that's why in martial arts, and I used to make fun of this a lot, but now I'm actually um, working on it myself, is body conditioning. So conditioning the hands, the legs, you know, the shin bone, you know, like your elbows, you know, like conditioning, getting getting, getting your body beaten down like Muay Thai style or, ka or Kaiokushin style or karate style, you know, from the tr traditional arts, um, just so that you have your body is really <clears throat> um, strong and hard really hard so you could break shit right and i think that that can can really can really serve you right in a situation like that especially if you don't have a weapon um but if your body's a weapon if your fist if you can break through stuff like concrete like um uh like red chucks or swolverine uh, you know uh one of my buddies on youtube like yeah he he does that man, you won't want to get punched by that guy <laughs> and he walks around with a knife all the time, but I think it's legal in the States. So don't, uh, uh, you know, don't just do that. Okay. Now, uh, the next thing, both pre and post fight. I'm not sure what, what he meant by this. So 
uh, pre and post fight. Uh, wait, let me. If I had to guess, pre and post fight, that wouldn't be like. I mean, before you get into fight and what you do after. Yeah, well, after if you survive, you just go home. In my opinion, uh, you know, here I'm. I'm not sure if I agree or disagree because I'm. I'm not sure what uh, the the person means, right? Um, but um, if you're talking about in terms of. Uh, maybe like trauma or something like that. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip this ad because it's annoying. Right, you guys watch action Hong Kong movies. Okay, so if you're talking about like the the nerves and the anxiety or the adrenaline dump, you know, after a a thing like that, like a, a situation, man, I would just um like I would do competition, man. I would compete. So that's why I I believe in competing and doing amateur fights. You know, so I, whether you're competing in something like uh, judo or um, or kickboxing or MMA or whatever whatever your combat sport is, competition is cool, man, because it, it teaches you how to deal with these things. Now, you guys might say, yeah, but it's you know it's uh, it's in a safe environment, this and that. It's like no, no, not yeah, maybe maybe so, but the feelings are still gonna be there. Like if you when you compete, you know you're you're about to get ready because it's different also, and I think even more intense because now. There's a guy there that's trained and that wants to kick your ass. And you're there to do the same thing. And a lot of times in these competitions, you don't even know who the guy you're fighting. Like with MMA, you, you know, kind of, yeah, at least you know the name and you know what club he's from. But when you do like judo, you have like a, a bunch of people you're fighting and you don't even know who they are unless, unless you do so much competition that you're at a point where, okay, you just see the same guys over and over again. But for the most part, you don't even know who it is, man. So you're, <laughs> you know, so there's, there's a lot of um, anxiety and stress that comes along with that. And then after that, well, that's before the fight. And then after that, during the fight, you know, it's just a big blur, you know, for the most part, until you get to a point where you're able to master all that kind of stuff. Um, and then after the fight, well, you know, you just chill out. So, but, and honestly, it's the best thing, like to deal with nerves and then to, to see how you feel uh, during the fight and then after the fight. So I think competition is really, really good for that, you know? So I highly recommend it for anybody who, um, wants to see what it's like, right. And who is really concerned about self-defense or who's a martial artist. Like you need to compete, man. You need to compete. You know, you don't need to win. Okay. Winning is, is entirely like whatever. It doesn't matter, but it's how you perform. It's how you feel and uh, how you manage, you know, before the fight, during the fight, after the fight. That's, that's the key. Okay. Next. Da, 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 da. Uh, what are the laws? Uh, this is the gentleman talking. What are the laws regarding reasonable force in the country? You know what? I think most countries, man, it's good to check. I think you could just chat GPT this shit. Now, or you could just go to the police station and ask. But I think most countries, you can't kill somebody, man. You know, so if somebody comes up to you and, and it's like, yo, give me your wallet. And then you break his neck. <laughs> like, dude, I'm going to jail. Hey, let me, let me, let me skip this, this silly ad for you. There you go. Sorry about that. Okay. So what I'm saying is, um, yeah, check the laws. Chat GPT just to be quick. Or if you have a friend that's a lawyer or a cop who knows about this stuff, yeah, ask them. Well, cops for sure. Lawyers depends if it's a, if it's a, you know, criminal lawyer, I guess, you know, or a lawyer who deals with these kind of things. But uh, for the most part, man, yeah, you can't kill nobody. All right. So, I mean, how hard is that to understand? Uh, and some countries, yeah, some countries are different. Like, I think there's a, there's a state in the U.S. where like you, you could actually be like, hey, man, you want to fight like a dueling uh, law where you could just be like, yo, man, me and you were thrown down, you know, and you can just throw down and, you know, whatever happens, happens, I think. So, all right. Now, uh, da, 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 da. what's the next thing that the gentleman mentioned? Uh, okay. Pressure testing. Yeah. Pressure testing, man. You don't need pressure testing. You, I mean, you'll do so, so much better than if you actually know already how to fight. Okay. Then pressure test. Yes. You have to, um, train in different, um, um, in different, different environments, different places, right? Like train where, things like this can happen, you know, with a friend, a buddy, your instructor or whatnot, if they're, if they're, they do that kind of stuff, like I see Mike from uh, heart to hurt. He does that. Like he, um, that was pretty cool. Actually. I, he went out, like he does like, uh, drills and practices, you know, like, uh, 
uh, outside in the parking lot, you know, next to the car while he's entering the car, while he's coming out of his club, you know, in um, what do you call it, uh, in an alleyway, whatever, you know, like he used to be a cop. So he's actually very um, logic. He makes a lot of sense when he talks about these things, I find, in my opinion. So, yeah, you can you can do that if you want. No problem. But once again, you know, um, to me personally, I find it's about creativity, like you know, like you have to be aware of your environment. So you have to learn how to use your environment. And of course, yeah, you have to, um, well, be able to adapt, right? Adaptability. Okay. And hey, guys, if the more athletic you are, yeah, the more easier it is for you to adapt to, you know, different environments and all that, right? And yeah, okay. Now, the next thing. Uh, Oh, wait, did I talk about pressure testing? Yeah, so pressure testing, guys, just you, you, you're already okay. If you're doing, um, you're already doing a lot of sparring if you're you're doing combat uh, combat sports. So, yeah, but yeah, I, I get it though. Pressure testing, like, you know, with knives and, and stuff like that. Sure, you can do a little bit, but whatever. Just buy some, some plastic knives and, and guns and all that, like, uh, you know, online, uh, in my opinion. <laughs> now, training in different environments, well, I already talked about that. Uh, you know, Icy Mike, how he does that. Um, okay, sparring, stand up and groundwork. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> like if you're doing combat sports, you, you it's it's already it, it's already taken care of. Now, another thing that the gentleman said was also to point out: sparring only makes up a small percentage of your self defense. Um, I don't really agree with that small. I don't know what small means to uh, to this to this to this person, but I don't know. It's a big thing, man. I, it's not the it's not everything, obviously, but it's not a it's not small. So I would say that um, fighting is actually um, well, sparring is what we. It's the closest thing that we could do that resembles fighting, right? When we practice, so I think that you definitely should uh, be sparring. Uh, a lot, right? Because you have to get good at it. You have to get good at fighting and good at uh, controlling yourself and managing your, um, um, you know, like stress, the anxiety, depression, all that, competition. And I'd say that 25% would be situational awareness. 25% would be de-escalating, right? 25% actual fighting, right? So actual fighting, but you have to know how to fight. Okay, and then twenty five percent getting out of there, aka you know uh, running, you know when you can. So I think that twenty five percent that's a quarter, man. So I don't think that's a small percentage. So to say that that's small, mm, no. And also when when you actually know how to fight, okay, like your confidence level goes up too. You know you're confident because you're competent in what you're you're able to do, and then all the other stuff you could just add on. Uh, to be honest, so. Uh, let's see here. Am I finished talking about this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that as a martial artist, right, to just wrap it up because it's uh, it's been going on for a little minute here. Um, I always suggest people to watch my videos on 2A because I, I watch everybody on 2X unless it's something that I need to have it at normal speed, but 2X all the time. So if you're a martial artist, okay, I think that you already have this, uh, you have to have this mindset of, you know, uh, always be ready and I'll be, always be aware. And um, yeah, because, you know, things happen, right? People are a little bit crazy, but I mean, it, like you should, it shouldn't be happening all that bad to like, it shouldn't be to the point where you might be ambushed. <laughs> it could happen. I don't know. What are you, a drug dealer? You know, like, uh, what are you going around, you know, in gangs and stuff like that and being ambushed? Ah oh, man, you know, like if you're if you're doing that, then you're kind of you're kind of going about life the wrong way, in my opinion, right? So that's for, that's it for this video, guys. I know it was long, but let me know what you think down below. Do you think that uh, um, would you add anything to this? Uh, in, in the sense that do you do you think that um, there's other f points to consider for the health defense, or do you think I pretty much covered it? And and do you agree? Do you agree with uh, all of this, uh, what I said? And if not, then uh, yeah, let me know down below. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Peace. How do I stop this thing? Ah, there you go.